And now it's time for more of Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hookup. This portion of the show is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best Shimano. Here we go. Another great hour of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. Here's Pete Gray, Rock God, Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. And welcome back. Hour number two, Let's Talk Hookup, right here on the Let's Talk Hookup app on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Pete Gray here with Rock God, Rick Maxa. What a great guest. Ryan Griffin from California Flyer. We're talking so much good technique and tackle here it's uh we've just uh, had an hour and we had a full hour left yeah having a great time here and if you want to join us get in on the fun participate on let's talk hookup man we want to hear from you that's what it's all about give us a call at 213-432-1090 again 213-432-1090 or you can text us via the let's talk hookup app as we mentioned before when you send us a text make sure you include your contact information a name and a phone number so that we can get back to you if you're the lucky winner of that big prize and what a prize it is if you didn't catch the beginning of the show one lucky caller is going to win a $300 gift card to Costa Del Mar and basically you're going to get to go pick out virtually any pair of Costas on the website and if you got a couple extra bucks left over after you pick out your perfect pair you can spend that on some Costa swag man a really cool prize and as a bonus Captain Brian Willie's throwing in a couple of three quarter day passes to go fishing up out of Dana War Sport Fishing so a Was great a opportunity couple? Uh, that's what he. That's what yeah, he said. Okay. You know, you're getting one for sure. Let's put it yeah, that way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, again, a, gr- a great opportunity. And again, if you want to get through, that's two one three four three two ten ninety, or text us up on the app. All right, very good. Uh, let's go ahead and jump back in the phones. You got it. They're packed up. Robert from Canyon Country. You're up next on Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning, Robert. Good morning. Hey, you guys give great advice over the last few months. I've taken a lot of it, bought new tackle, and I just wanted to give you guys an update. Went out on Father's Day and also my daughter's birthday and her first 120-pound bluefin tuna on the new low end. Wow, that's fantastic. Amazing. Congratulations. That's great. That's a, so that's a good trip. I wanted to point out that, with, yeah, it was a trip of a lifetime. She's gone out on a lot of hard trips where we didn't get anything and she stuck it out. And she got a 120-pounder on her birthday and Father's Day. So memories for a lifetime. So thanks for all the great advice. Only need need one like that. That's the beauty of it, of this great fishing that we're having here. And thanks a lot for the call. We appreciate that very much. uh, Great uh, text from our good buddy, Mr. C. John Critchett, you did, too. And and a good good question. What's the proper way to store the California flyer after a day of fishing? Should it be disassembled or just rinsed with fresh water? That, that's a great question. Um, you know, disassembled is really ideal if you are planning on storing it for any period of time. Uh, you know, take the wings out. Take the time to get the salt off everything. Get your components bagged up and get yourself ready. So the next time you unzip your, your carry case, assuming you, you bought one of those with your with your flyer, if not, you know, a nice Tupperware. Keep it dry. Keep it out of the sun. So you do disassemble. Take the rubber bands off. Disassemble it. Yeah, because be you, you know rubber bands uh, under under tension or pressure. Uh, you know, after about thirty six hours, they've lost their integrity anyways. Yeah. So you know, you're not going to take one that was set up with rubber bands on it. You know, in a week and go fish it. Your, yeah. your hook rig is going to fall right off, right? Okay. So I would I would recommend at the very least taking your rubber bands off. There's a lot of times we just leave the wings in. That's all fine. Okay. You know, assuming you've got a place to store them where you're not bending or tweaking the lure yeah you know if you store the thing in a box and it folds in half like a taco and you go pull it out in two weeks it's going to hold the shape of that taco because of the fact that it's been in there probably getting hot in the you know storage in your boat or wherever so i would say ideally in the shade uh in a cool dry place and disassembled you know just like any piece of gear you know the the more time you put into taking care of your gear the uh the better it's going to serve you in the future so yeah i would say that you know rinse them for fresh water and, uh, you know, it takes 30 seconds to pull them apart and uh, store them up and, and put them away. And, yeah, keep them out of, a, keep them out of the sun for sure, uh, you know, just like anything that, you know, has got a rubber-type rubber, rubber type, uh, texture. And, 
that's about it. Nothing, yeah. nothing too right. special. Yeah. So, uh, and and you're talking about the bag. I mean, like I put mine in the box. I just keep it in the box. The box is so, great. Yeah. yeah. But uh, you have a new bag that you guys came out with. Yeah, they're great. They're they're a really nice canvas bag, and and it fits. Uh, so I keep two. I have two lures in mine. A lot of extra wings and bands, carbon fiber pins, and and everything fits in this nice little case. And the case fits really good in in my bag that I bring tuna fishing. So when I go gotcha. on boats to work, I know I've got my bag with my stuff just in case there's a. There's an end to fill somewhere. I've, I've always got, no, I've got my extra stuff. And th- they fit really nice in this little, they're, they're available on the website, californiaflyer.com. The bags are, if you don't have one for your bait, they're really nice. Yeah. Really nice. Now, you sell them on your website, California Flyer, but you also sell them like a Fisherman's Landing Tackle, Dana Landing, and such like that, too, right? You know, I'm not sure how many of the retailers have just the bag. Oh, no, just about, I mean, the, but the California Flyer itself. You bet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. If you're looking for, uh, you know, a lot of the places now, if you go to buy that kit, uh, you know, with the wings and the whole setup, you know, you, you can also get that at the retailer as well. But you can definitely get the carry case for the lure on the website. Oh, no, that only comes on the website. Not, okay. yeah, some of the retailers i'm sure have them i just don't know the yeah the details there. Yeah. yeah and do you like at fisherman's line do you sell the, the extra wings and the pins and stuff like that or is that we, only we, a, we a love that company only. we sell everything california flyer we sell the we sell the baits we sell the wings we sell extra rigging kits extra extra wings clothing you know they got a the they got thing. they got a lot of re- i mean they really do it's a very cool logo they got a bunch of shirts and hats and yeah, we just we're, we're a big fan of that product, and yeah, we carry we carry we pretty much carry everything they sell. And and, and you have kites now too. Yeah, yeah. The, the kites are amazing, and I think you know, like I was t- we were talking about kites earlier, and 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 there's they're all great. You know, I can't really say one's better. Or one I only fish one because sure. of this. The, a kite is really essentially a kite. There, okay. you know, it's a square piece of fabric, yeah. four spars. They all fly the same essentially. The one set apart from the California Flyer kite is that it comes with a tube that's durable. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> the storage tube is my favorite part of that kite. I mean, the thing is really nice. All the other kite tubes I have are covered in electrical Correct. tape and duct tape sure. and stickers, and they're holding together. So, hey, if, you know, if you're going to go choose one, you might as well have one that you know can take some beatings on the boat. You know, the, the storage tube is a huge one, and they fly great. They are really a nice kite and very competitively priced, and you they're bet. good looking, and the rigging is nice that comes with them, and they're just they're perfect. And it's work. got a you know big and you flying a- fish logo. On yeah. It. yeah, it's cool looking. Yeah, you know? and you can put a balloon on it. You bet. Yeah, you bet. Right. Yeah, yeah. What's your favorite way to rig the balloon onto the kite? It depends how much of a hurry I'm in. You know, so if I'm on my skiff and there's a you know a bunch of fish up and I have got to get a balloon in the air right now, I blow one up, I zip tie it right to the kite. And then I throw a huge piece of electrical tape from one spar <laughs> up over the balloon down to the next spar, and that thing is in the air. Wow. So you okay. can have one rigged up in seconds if you need to. If I have to. And that's a great way to do it. So blow up your balloon, tie a knot in it, zip tie it down to the center spar, electrical tape from one spar over the balloon to the other, and just send the thing up. If you've got to get a kite in the air now, don't waste your time doing fancy rigging. Now, if I'm on a yacht and I have time, I make a nice wax thread loop, and I, you know, make a nice knot on the balloon, and I tie it real carefully down into the into the position in the middle of the kite where you tie the, the balloon off, mm-hmm. and then I take wax thread and I go from you know the top spar up over the balloon to the other, and I size it up, get it all right, and then I tape the string along maybe two or three places, and uh, you know. That makes a nice – your kite's going to fly. You know What you don't want to have is your balloon wobbling back and forth. You don't want to set your kite up and see play in the balloon. You want to get the balloon essentially tight enough to the kite where it, it, it stays in the air kind of as one unit. If you notice your kite's wobbling back and forth left to right or tracking one way left to right that doesn't make sense – uh, you know, bring it in and tighten up your strings. You've probably got a loose string somewhere or something like that. But, hey, if you're in a pinch, man, a, a roll of electrical tape and some zip ties, you can get a kite up really fast. Real fast. <laughs> All That's right. Good answer. Very good. All right. Well, let's go ahead and jump back into it, right? You got it. We got a great text. This one you kind of touched on before. Uh, was from Jason in San Diego. Is California Flyer ever going to or thought about producing anything with their flying fish that can be trolled on its own or casted at a, a spot of foamers uh, like I've seen a few other companies doing, but none of them have the realness of california flyer yeah i can't speculate too much you know because we're in a we're in a major copycat industry right now so you know the secrets have to stay kind of where they are until we've got something out there in terms of a prototype that that uh, can can be put onto the market so 
you know, there, there's some things coming uh, that, like that will be castable, trollable, uh, and maybe in between with some other ideas. I mean, we're, the, the creativity is, is we're only limited to the creativity that, yeah. you know, we can come up with in prototypes and go out and test. So right? you're the, like the field, field research guy. You go out and do the, the yeah, test. Yeah, I, I get all the, you know, I'm in the best place because, you know, <laughs> j- Jazz is the one doing all the hard yeah. work, you know, and I just go, well, this sucks or this is great, yeah. you know, and so I go out Give and try to break it, try to catch fish right. on it, whatever I can right. do to, you know, find the problems, right? Yeah, for sure. And then correct them in the shop and then try it again. So, yeah. you know, we do a lot of that field research. Field research. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Exactly. Got to do it. Yeah. yeah. You, you got you to gotta put your time into that. Otherwise, you, you, can't, you can't have a product go out with a name on it, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, one line open. You want to get through right now. 213-432-1090. Talk to Mike. Mike's calling us some Rosemead this morning. Good morning, Mike. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, good morning. Uh, welcome back, Pete. And, uh, Thank you. Good morning, Rick and Ryan. Um, hey, on yesterday's program, I believe Mark Wish had a little comment about the three fish, uh, a three limit uh, white sea bass limit right now, and um, kind of saying that could be a little excessive. I mean, if theoretically, if you think about it, like on a two day trip, if you catch six white sea bass, I would believe that's a little excessive, don't you think so? I, I, I just don't think you need to have six white sea bass or even three. But um, anyway, on on Ryan's comments on on this on your product, I guess it's not really applicable for marlin fishing. Marlin fishing right now because it's not really a, a drop back type of a lure. But um, any, any any comments on that? Well, yeah, I would say that it's really primarily. Uh, you know, you're going to target tuna with it based on the fact that it, you know, it's meant to be fr- flown from the kite and it's, you know, it's really designed to receive a bite from a tuna. Obviously, you know, you might go out there and fly the thing from a kite and skip it around the ocean and a striped marlin or something might come up and try and eat it. That That's, that's something that's going to happen here eventually to somebody at some point in time. But yeah. Uh, I would say that, uh, you know, we've got a whole line of trolling lures on the website. Great marlin lure selection on the website. There's a handful of interesting shapes. They're all uh, driven and influenced by taxidermied uh, molds of various bait fish. So there's a mackerel, a flying fish. Uh, there's a... Um, there's a couple different color patterns and, and some really nice trolling heads on the website that if, the, if you know if that's what you're looking for something to target billfish with there, there's some neat options there. Yeah, for sure. Lots CaliforniaFlyer.com. Go check out uh, some of the trolling heads that are on there. They're, yeah. they're pretty. They're beautiful. They troll wonderfully. You guys found such a cool niche into into our market and definitely brought something that just was was different. You know, and there's lots of things that are variations of others but everything that california flyers produce has been very like the realism is just so high and you guys took that to such a different level you know the it's just not a it's not a different version of a yummy flyer it's something so different yeah it stands alone totally right because you can fish it like a dead bait if you wanted to just dead drift it and fish it and like it's you get, gets bit as a dead bait i caught my biggest fish on it that way really yeah we were on the just ba- like a dead flyer we were on the bow uh dealing with a you know a kind of a novice angler and and helping him gaff a fish and you know i walked back to find my rod bent over but we had a california flyer just sitting out just underneath hanging. the kite and i just kind of set it so i was like all right it's sitting there it looks like it's i'm gonna go run up to the bow and help this guy and five minutes there i came back and i was i was getting you know spooled <laughs> how big it was like uh, two ninety something. Oh, o- almost three hundred. Oh, yeah. almost. So, yeah. Uh, that was that was my best fish on that bait, and that was just sitting there dead drifting. I never wound. You tight. were even there. That thing came and he ate it. Popped the clip all by himself and came tight all by himself. Yeah. So you know that fish was was hooked immediately when he when he ate the lure, and so that was interesting. And it fishes great that way. And that was back to you know I, I had mentioned I kind of have had scenarios where I've like slingshotted the bait out. You know if you are dead drifting in a zone where there's a lot of fish being caught that way guys just sitting there kind of waiting for the fish to come through and eat their bait you can do a lot with a kite on a dead drift and get a lot of action out of your lure or or dead bait by just retrieving the kite letting the kite in and out you can fish your bait on the surface you can literally walk your lure or dead bait in and out from your boat that way and you can you can cover a lot of water and you can keep your lure moving keep your dead bait moving and, and that i think gets more of a reaction bite than just something that's sitting there 
that looks like maybe it was wounded or injured and yeah. you know it's supposed to be moving it should be swimming around yeah. some yeah some, you know should have the at least the influence of movement right sure. but that's a great call though there there are times when the fish are on a on a particular shallow and it's not big giant breezers a lot of times later in the season and it's small wolf packs of fish and the crowd the fish are concentrated and the crowd is extra concentrated and you can't you can't necessarily fish it the way you'd like to. You don't have the range. And of, they're biting that unlo- way. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's the way to catch them. You know, you set up on a drift, and they come under the boat, and you hang a few on the kite, and you you, you, you just keep sitting there picking at but them. But talk right? about a way to separate yourself from the other 30 guys that are there whose baits are motionless. Put, in, you, put in the work. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Put in the work. Great don't, advice. Don't sit there and just stare at your bait in the in the gyros or whatever, you know. Get, get a couple guys in the cockpit that want to fish it, and, you know. Get a guy on the kite moving it in and out. Get your bait moving around. Yeah, yeah. move it. Put some and work. Into it, more you, fun to watch them eat it when they when it's moving too, right? Oh yeah, because you're paying attention. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, for that, sure. That's just it. You're fishing, keeps you focused. Yeah, right? you're not inside goofing around. Well, we're not getting bites, yeah. you know. Just sit there and put your time into it, and you, yeah. it'll, you'll capitalize, right? I just got back from Montana last night fishing uh, with my uh, very great Stotesbury and and, mm-hmm. and Chris Scott. Uh, great time. And that's the ultimate in paying attention is indicator fishing on a river. That's it. I mean, that is like you have to pay attention because you look away for one second and your bobber's down, you're done. That's it. It's over. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, yeah, fit, it's like, I fish Crowley Lake. And yeah. So, so you, you know, know, yeah, the indicator fishing there. And boy, yeah. it gets nice just sitting there kind of gazing off, looking at the mountain range yeah. there. And uh, I mean, I can't even tell you how many. I mean, I got buddies yelling at me going, Zat, Zat. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I'm just, it's down. Yeah, it's gone. One, one breath looking the wrong direction. Yeah, exactly. You your opportunity. It, it's over. Yeah. yeah and I got, that's kind of the same thing. It's like you got to pay attention. These guys are texting me right now as we're on the show. So Rick, Rick Sports Center in Mammoth. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, if you if you want to go have a great time on Crowley Lake, got to stop at Rick Sports Center, go see Brian. Yeah, go see Brian. They set you up. The guys up up, up there, they're great. Right they're, they'll I, show you the right the right bugs, the right way to indicate. Rick to indicate Sports fish. Center is a one stop shop. They have an incredible fly selection. Yeah. Their customer service is is, yeah. is amazing, and you, you can walk in there and meet Brian and his shop dog, and he'll get you set up for whatever you're going to do. Even if you're just a new angler that's going to go, you know, say fish uh, some salmon eggs or night crawlers and try and get your son on his first trout or if you're really experienced go in there and talk to him and figure out what what midges and leeches are working and and he'll set you up that's a great place to go if you're going to be on your way to the sierras don't don't miss out on rick sports center and and it's all about having the right stuff especially on crowley i mean you could be sitting in the same spot watching a guy just absolutely slam if you don't have the right stuff you're not going to get him oh i'm sitting there next to brian on my float tube one day and i've got the exact same size midge and his has one strand of red thread on it and he is wailing on him next to me and I have not gotten a bite. And he gives me his red thread midge that looks just like mine, but right. it's got one red thread. Yeah. And the next thing you know, I'm having a 20, 20 fish day. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. So yeah. that's so that inside knowledge. A little bit of pays info. Off. Oh, yeah. yeah. You bet. For sure. You All bet. Right. That's good. Good info. All right. Hey, with that said, we're going to find out what's going on on the water. It's time for that fishdope.com report with your saltwater guide. Today, that catch report sponsored by the fish pros at Fisherman's Processing in San Diego. The best processing for your fish when your trip returns to the San Diego landings, whether it's local, long range, or your private boat trip. Plus, with Fish Pros, the market, now you can purchase fresh fish. They sell their killer smoked and jerkied fish, their spices, rubs, smoked cheese, those tuna burgers, that amazing poke kit, and uh, their brand new ceviche spice. Check out their location in Old Town on Taylor Street or call for details and order online at fishermansprocessing.com and be sure to check out their new Instagram account at The Real Fisherman's Processing. Let's talk to the man, your saltwater guide, Captain Dave Hansen's online. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Ryan, Pete, Rick. I made it home. I got in just in front of this hurricane. It was absolutely gnarly yesterday morning coming into Cabo, and it is pouring down rain here right now. Absolutely pouring. We're getting the early first hurricane down here. We're just catching the tail end of it. It's shooting off into the Pacific, but we got a giant south swell and a lot of rain, a lot of wind, but it's going to be cool. It's going to bring in a bunch of cool fish, but we made it just in front of that, Pete. Had a trip of a lifetime up to Sea Cortez, but let's talk about what's going on at Ryan. Listening to you right now, unbelievable information. It's it's a pleasure to listen to someone who can articulate exactly what needs to happen. And I sure. related it a long time ago to midge fishing on Lake Crowley off of Alligator Point, the whole thing with this bluefin fishing that that rubber flying fish underneath the kite. It reminded me of midge fishing up there 20 years ago. 
you just articulate everything so perfect. It's, it's wonderful to listen to you. But I really appreciate Dave, that, Dave. Thank you. What's going on in Southern California right now is uh, historic. We're back to the cold water anchovy fishing days. This is what I love more than anything. And Wooly tapped on it pretty good on this sea bass thing. Gang, this is your opportunity to catch a sea bass along the California coast. You have some of that anchovy. You chum that. You fish a mackerel on a dropper loop while you're fishing calicos. Shove that rod in the rod holder with a mackerel on it underneath the boat in 35, 45 feet of water fishing the edges of that kelp, and you will not believe what will happen. And these fish aren't little. These are all that coastal sea bass, average fish, 30 pounds. You're going to catch fish of a lifetime. You're going to be blown away that that worked, but it works flawless. And as that barracuda starts to show up in the mix here, and it is showing up, there's spots here and there up and down the coast. Fish mackerel underneath that barracuda, you're going to catch that sea bass on that barracuda too. Up at the Channel Islands, gang, if we get some weather breaks, the fishing up there is insane. My my old deckhand cap, Mike Maddox, is up there fishing with some guys in between trips on his big boat, and they're just wailing on that sea bass in between the weather up there. It's really, really fun fishing Santa Cruz and Santa Rosa Island. Fun, fun fishing up there, Catalina. You know that's the most consistent bite going on the coast right now. It seems to just keep on chugging along. And then Marcus, on like Brian was saying over there on the Fury, he had an opportunity on a two-day trip to fish some different areas, some different style fishing with that squid, very good sea bass fishing, yellowtail fishing, if you find the right conditions. And then we all know about what's going on offshore. Yeah, like Ryan was saying, we're in a different moon phase. Just like myself, we like that front side of the moon. The back side kind of always sucks and makes everyone think the fish are gone. They haven't gone anywhere, like Ryan said, 30-mile area of fish. There's plenty of fish out there. Just relax, calm down. They're going to bite again, and everything's going to be all right. That offshore thing's far from being over. It's just really getting started, like Ricky always says. We're just barely touching the surface of what's about to happen. So, yeah, all I we're can ready say for is it. We are in a hit fun- July yet. Yeah, and fish dope, <laughs> you know, Danny and fishdope.com, they're keeping you on the fish. 20 bucks off a new membership to fishdope.com using the code hookup now. Lowercase, no space. Hookup now is your $20 code. Uh, pretty sure that uh, fish dope guys will have a BD. Out, uh, thing at the B Outdoor oh, Things sure. today. Yeah, we go see the, those guys over at that event. And of course, Dave, how do we find you? Well, gang, I'm really hard to see. I'm all over social media. Three brand new videos every single day across all social media platforms. It doesn't matter which one. I'm there on all of them. Also, I have a phenomenal website that helps you learn how to catch fish and not have to follow guys like Ryan around. You can actually go out and catch your own fish. Check out my website at YourSaltWaterGuide.com and uh, it's good to be home, Rick. I love glad, Kelly and my monkey. Land. I'm happy to be back. You glad made you it. made it back. Yeah, good, good, good for that. And we'll talk to you next Sunday. Thanks, Dave. Great to hear from you, Dave. All right, you guys. See ya. Interesting. Point Bye, Ryan and Cabo, huh? Yeah, I oh. saw that first tropical big, little thing happening. Big, yeah, it's uh, Celia, Hurricane it's, Celia. Yeah. Is that right? And it was kind of headed there, and that kind of veered it off. It was right? way down below the tip when I saw it on yeah. the on the weather last week. But yeah, I mean, I'm sure the, the South Swell was just huge there last week. Uh, was it? It yeah. was almost closing out the bay. Uh, Whoa. No like uh, like the arches had a point break on it, and, wow. and where the offices was, you know, huge massive shore break, and yeah. San Jose Marina was uh, like hold off, wait for the set, and then get out of the marina. Yeah, get yeah. out of here! Holy mackerel! Really? Yeah, San Jose. Well. I got some great videos. I'll show you. Guys. Really? Yeah. Were you down there? Uh, no, I had a couple friends, a couple though, that, friends that left to bring boats north, oh, and north. you know there was a weather window last week. Quite a few guys came north. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, had one day of bad weather coming through Cedros, but they all left about the same time and uh, got out in time. Y- you know, San- leaving San Jose Harbor was uh, like kind of a pucker factor, Ooh, white knuckles, you know. And yeah. Then, you know, Cabo. Because that kind of faces that uh, jetty kind of faces due south, it right? It does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, you know, that it gets really small on a big swell. You know, yeah. It's like a pretty wide entrance to a marina. Yeah. But when there's a big swell coming in there, all of a sudden like, it feels like you're going through the, you know, the jaws. Watch out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, be sure to check out this week's edition of 
Western Outdoor News, always loaded with great stuff. A lot of good sea bass talk there in that too uh, today. And of course, rockfish and uh, uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, and, and the tuna fishing, bass fishing, trout fishing in the Sierra is on fire. Check it out. This week's edition of Western Outdoor News. All right. Hey, we'll continue on. Great information. If you want to join us this morning, give us a call at 213-432-1090. Had another great text come through. It says, good morning, guys. Uh, Ryan, I see that you're, uh, through your social media, that you are very big on fish care. And I'm curious, do swordfish heat up like tuna uh, when you're fighting them? And are they just as difficult or more difficult to cool back down? That's from Rich Campos. Good question. That's a great question, Rich. Uh, you know, yeah, I don't know exactly the metabolism and the body temps of swordfish. I know a lot more about tuna than I do swordfish. But just like anything uh, that has a heartbeat, you are going to have internal body temperature uh, that is going to be a factor when you uh, want to go and, you know, when you finally kill the fish and you want to get it cold. It's going to be imperative to get it cold quickly. And obviously a swordfish, you know, it could be a 100-pounder. That's a pretty easy fish to deal with. Not too hard to get a few bags of ice on that and cool it down. But if you caught a real big one, um, yeah, that, that could be a tough fish to get cool. I would say that if you're going to catch a swordfish, a tuna, any fish that you plan on eating for any reason, it would be in your best interest to, you know, get the gills and the guts out of that fish and get it as cold as you possibly can, as quickly as you possibly can. And uh, same would go for swordfish, you bet. So, And swordfish are one of those fish that I would, you know... It, Everybody wants to come in and weigh them on the scale and take a picture, right? Sure. So, okay, if you got to do that, I understand. The trophy fish, once-in-a-lifetime thing, you should do that. Get your, get your photos. But as soon as you're done, uh, you know, I, I, my first thing I do on swordfish is I scrub them down with a poly brush, a real stiff poly brush. And you won't believe what the comes. whole The whole thing. whole fish, yeah. Scrub. Inside and out. Well, mostly I just start on the outside. I don't even touch anything else. I just get my poly brush and just scrub them down, hose them off, and I get you get all that slime and gunk off of them. And, uh, and then I'll go in and gill and gut them out. And and scrub that whole inside body cavity out and you know try and get try and get your those fish as clean as you can if we're specifically talking about swordfish because they are they're dirty yeah yeah and, and do you cut then you cut the bill off the tail off put it in a nice yeah typically yeah and swordfish are you know kind of like a shark right so they've got the bones you know just kind of a you know one big spine that runs down them uh down the center of the body and they're easy to split in half you can split the body into into thirds or halves and then you can make them fit in a cooler or a kill bag oh, that way okay. right rather mm-hmm. than having a big long fish so if you end up lucky enough to land yourself a swordfish uh it's real easy to uh you know go in through the uh, stomach cavity find the vertebrae put a knife right between it and you can cut them in half like butter with about a 10 or 12 inch knife and then make them fit in a cooler and ice them down for a day you know but yeah just like any fish get it cold get as much ice on it as you can keep it clean when we had our big fish at clemeni a few years back same you know we wanted the the hero fish and we were to keep it cold and uh we i was blown away at how much ice we burned through on that one fish now granted we wanted to keep the thing whole it didn't fit in a kill bag the bill was sticking out one way the tail was the other so we weren't able to zip the bag up and we kind of like we tried to like lace it through the handle so clearly the not ideal conditions and we were doing an overnight trip to Clemente but we brought 600 pounds of ice with us by the next morning after we caught that fish we had maybe a hundred pounds of good ice left for our trip we caught one tuna and hauled ass back home like i i was blown away at how much ice we burned through trying to keep that thing cold clearly in poor conditions a bag not zipped up and and everything else but like but also being as smart as we could about it you know wet towels over the top of it and like i was just gonna say wet towels are are good doing our best and still like we burn we i would never have thought you know i would have thought you could have just laid that much ice on top of the thing in bags and it would have been fine for the day and like we burned through a ton on that thing yeah yeah, when you think you're taking enough ice on your fishing trip, get 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 another four totally. or five get, get bags. More. Totally, yeah. Yeah. totally. Yeah, you yeah. can't have too much. You no know, take such it, thing. take as much as you can yeah. possibly carry on a yeah. tuna or swordfish trip. Yeah. You know, especially I mean, most guys who are going to go swordfish, you know, are going to be back in at the dock if they catch one. Right. And uh, you know, go buy as much ice as you can get your hands on. Ice That's, is a cheap price to yeah. you know pay to have a nice piece of fish. And and it's all about for me. I you said I emphasize fish care because I really you know that that to me is a big aspect of fishing for me. I I don't really uh, you know. 
most of fishing for me in saltwater is because I really love the back end, the fish I get out of it that I can share with my friends and my family. And I want to give them something that's really special, you yeah. know? Take care of it. And respect the fish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. for sure. Don't catch these big tunas and keep them if you don't have the right ice to keep, yeah. you know, right amount of ice totally. to keep them. Yeah. Leave them have, baking we, on we, the deck. We don't have the right to do that. No, we don't, you know, totally. we, we should be respecting these tunas and we're lucky to have them here. Yeah, One day sure. they might be gone. Yeah. Yes. Well, but yeah the, every the, every the, big tuna you catch might be your last one. Yeah, and, and that is the truth, so right? Respect, so, yeah. yeah. Respect, respect and respect enjoy these tunas. Yeah. yeah. Great call. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Hookup coming your way. More of your phone calls, more great texts, and more with Ryan. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Hookup on the mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. With gas prices going crazy, you certainly need to get the lowest price possible for your car or truck, and especially your trailer boat. That's why you need to visit Summit Gasoline at the San Diego Sports Arena. You're not going to just save pennies. You will save real money when you fill up at Summit Gasoline. Summit does not compromise on service. Oh, no. The great staff is attentive, friendly, and ready to help. When you pull up to the pumps, notice how clean everything is. The great sound system, and of course, the low gas and diesel prices. Walk into the Summit Gasoline Bistro and check out the selection of frozen bait and chum, the top of the line Italian coffee, and so much more. Get discounted Everingham Live Bait Certificates, your free 100 pounds of ice with a 35 gallon minimum purchase, and stock up on snacks, beer, water, and soda for your trip. Just when you need low gas prices most, Summit Gasoline at the Sports Arena comes to the rescue. Summit Gasoline, low prices, friendly staff, and easy in and out with your boat and trailer at the San Diego Sports Arena. Safe travel should always include travel insurance. This is Bob Dawson at Dawson & Associates. We offer many different plans from one-year plans to single-trip plans. Traveling twice or more a year, an annual plan will cover most every trip that you make. Also, if you get injured on a trip, it'll fly you back home or fly you to a hospital of your choice. And it's worldwide coverage once you're 100 miles from home. So call me at 619-990-3068 or go to safariglobaltravel.com. Cutwater Spirits celebrates those who work smarter, not harder, and know that enjoying a bar-quality cocktail is as easy as cracking open a can. No mixing required. We cut out that step for you. Made in San Diego with our real award-winning spirits, Cutwater canned cocktails are ready to enjoy, ready when you are. All you got to do is choose your cocktail, such as our fan favorites like our lime margarita, tiki rum mai tai, vodka mule, or mango margarita. Or try them all. Please enjoy responsibly. Season long range fishermen know that the Red Rooster 3 is the finest fishing vessels in terms of technology, design, speed, comfort, and safety. This 105 foot sport fishing yacht meets every demand for comfort while delivering an unforgettable fishing vacation. Captain Andy Cates and crew are experienced, friendly, and sincere in their desire to help you have the trip of a lifetime. Book a trip on the Red Rooster 3 and you'll be back. Trips go fast. So check redrooster3.com or call Lee Palm Sport Fisheries at 619 224 3857. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Having a great time here this morning. So much great information. Having a lot of fun. Man, I'm so fired up to go catch a bluefin after yeah. doing this. Like, oh, I, yeah. I need to get that oh, kite yeah. up and rolling right now. To get that cow for the yeah, fire up exactly. there. And that's the thing about it is, is if anybody, if you ever dealt with uh, buying a $30 frozen flyer, catching your own, taking care of them, whatever, uh, California flyer just makes things easy. Yeah, and you're going to eventually run out of real flyers real one flyers. day, and that California flyer is going to have to come out, and you're going to all of a sudden, you know, any confidence that you were lacking in it or any doubts that you may have had, uh, at one point in time, you will all of a sudden go, okay. This works. I, I get it. You get it, yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying that it's the fish all over anything. Yeah. I mean, the, don't get me wrong. There's been days out there where I've had the California flyer up, and it's not producing the bites that dead ones are. And there's been a lot of days where dead ones are not producing the bites that the California really? flyer is. I mean, we commercial fished almost exclusively with the California flyer all last summer. I mean, we caught a lot of fish on it. Is it. You think that part of that is because you can move it so much faster? 
Well, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So you're you're gaining a lot of the uh, bites just out of the reaction from that, right? Yeah. So you're presenting a flying fish the way it naturally looks, right? You're look you're you're, you're skipping it and flying it in a way that emulates a uh, real live flying fish. Yeah. And I, so you're matching the hatch as close as you can essentially to mm-hmm. what they are looking to get and I feel like the reaction is 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 behind that, right? I can remember the day that we got turned on to like, well, this is clearly not a gimmick, and we got tuned up by several of our buds fishing small spots of big fish that mm-hmm. were just like chipping, not big foamers and not big flat spots. Single either, turn, sm- dip in. Yeah, small spots of chippers that were moving pretty fast, and we were pretty good with fishing a dead flyer, but that is trying to get up in front of it and drop one into a spot or or try to troll along with it and you just can't move it and the two or three guys that we were fishing with that all had that that could basically walk that bait at at speed into a spot we're getting stop after stop after spot we had to watch it happen and we never you know we we never were able to put our dead one into it because we couldn't move it fast enough and just dropping it into a spot that you know the spot was gone and they were just they were basically walking the bait at the same speed that the fish were moving and eventually they would bite it every time and all we could do was drop a pin drop and then the fish would just keep going by it and yeah that, and, that, and that, that makes walk- that uh that, that's where that bait shines the that next shines. day i was like well this clearly isn't a gimmick thing but you know like that, that's it and it, it's got it's just you you said it best it's got its place it's a tool in your arsenal yeah. like it's part of a tool uh, a part of an arsenal that you need to have it you in. have to you have, have yeah. to have it if, if you're leaving the dock to go target large bluefin and you don't have it you're you're in, you're limiting yourself yeah with the cost of fuel and ice and balloons and everything else a california flyer is not cheap but it's also a lure that is going to catch you the big fish that you're working on and trying to catch over and over and over again like yeah. at the end of its life cycle it's the cheapest thing you could imagine Imagine for catching a big fish, it's a couple hundred dollars on the front end, but on the back end, there's. I mean, you you would you would gladly shovel the money out of your wallet. You couldn't do it fast enough on something that was so effective that lasted that long. One right. of our callers said it best. I mean, you're trying to go out and make a memory of a lifetime. Totally. You you might be going That's out true. to catch that fish of a lifetime, and so if there's a way that can help you do that, uh, you know, you should take advantage of that. And that scenario last year, there was a lot of early season fish that were, you know, single turn, just dipping shiners, barely see them, and they were moving. Moving so fast, that was it. and you were able to kick it up and get that flyer going uh, fast enough to catch up to the fish, or you know, send it into a spot and it doesn't fall apart. The wings don't break, the hooks don't pull out of the. You know, you're not dealing with a natural bait. You're dealing with something that can take some abuse, and you're able to continue. You know, bait in the water, fishing. Uh, you know, in a way that's going to get a bite if you get it in front of the fish. And that was the name of the game last season early on for a lot of days, you know. That was describing our day. You want to talk about frustrating, watching three or four-year buds oh. get big one after big one after big one. Like, that yeah. was it. Like, never again will we be in that scenario. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you got to have it as a tool. Totally. In your chest. It is. It's a tool. Yeah. 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 And and I'm going to, I'm gonna, uh, you know, the business side of me here on Let's Talk Hook, of course, the only way we keep Let's Talk Hook up alive is having great sponsors that, that we do have and that uh, keep the show on the air. California Flyer is not a sponsor. They didn't pay us a penny. They didn't even give us a free flyer. We're doing this because this is a service to our listeners, totally. and Ryan is a fantastic um, guest, and imparting his knowledge on our listeners is what this is all about. It's not because they're paying us to do this. This is a yeah, service legit. to our listeners. And, and the same goes for me. I don't work for California yeah. Flyer. I'm not involved in the business, and yeah. I don't make any profit from the right. company. I am just a firm believer in uh, you know, this is what you do when you have close friends that you want to see succeed, exactly. you know, exactly. and, I, and I really want to see California Flyers succeed. And I really believe in the product, yeah. you know, wholeheartedly. Small company, you bet, you know, invention and, 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 and something and, and new. And I want to see, States, you know, yeah. I want to see the, the, the US, drive yeah. for uh, new and innovative things that capitalize on our fishery. I mean, yeah. how often do we see something come out that transforms how people think about going fishing for something? Uh, you know, I mean, it's a really innovative product for sure. It has helped people capitalize on amazing days of fishing and it's allowed us to uh you know adapt and and take advantage of situations that we couldn't otherwise have a, have caught the fish out of before it's something that 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 if you fly a kite on bluefin you should have in your arsenal absolutely 100%. yeah, yeah for absolutely sure. yeah. hey um i want to make a comment uh we got a text from uh, a gentleman that uh, texted in and made a good point i'm not going to read the text but um tipping the cruise. I've had multiple 
problems or not problems, but people call me and say, you know, I, I watch a guy go on a, on a sport boat and I watch him give the crew 10 bucks or 20 bucks or something like that. He paid 250, 300 dollars for this trip and he's tipping the crew 10 or 20 bucks. And, uh, you know, guys, that's just not appropriate. So people say, what's an appropriate tip? Generally speaking, whether it be a local long-range trip, um, 20% of whatever that trip would cost would be, in my eyes, an appropriate tip. Yeah, I agree with that. It's a lot like going to a restaurant. And, yes, you know, you, totally. might, you might tip in a restaurant based on the service you received. Right. And so, you know, I could say the same thing about, you know, some, some charter boat experiences are better than others and might warrant a better tip than others. Absolutely. However, it's still a form of hospitality. And gratuity is a huge part of these guys' income. You know, and they rely on it. It's a big part of it. And, And you you know, you think about, too, the level of service that you got from all of the guys on the boat. You know, there's a captain, there's a crew member, there's a there's a chef. There's usually several crew members. I mean, start to think about what your gratuity is split amongst those guys. You know, there's five people that are splitting that splitting that tip up. If you throw them 20 bucks, you're basically giving each guy two bucks, right? For potentially. Yeah, that's what I'm I'm, I'm getting at. And I agree. And like you say. It's gratuity. It's on you. It's certainly not a thing. But I, I'm. I just couldn't. I couldn't agree more. Like, yeah, I, I think a, you're right. You know, fifteen to thirty percent of whatever your overall expenses were for the trip is probably a great way to start yes. looking at that. And then obviously, you know, base it on the service and your experience. You know, I mean, if you had a horrible experience, and you know, don't get on and write a bad review. Go talk to the guy about it and talk tell to him the captain. Tell him. That? Tell him totally. what you thought. You know, man up and go have a conversation right. with the crew and say, you know, I really didn't have a great time. I wasn't really having. I, this wasn't what I was expecting. And this is sort of how I feel. And, you know, you'd probably be surprised at the outcome of that because it'll probably for be sure. made right for you. Yes. You know, God, and so, so tip according to your feelings and, and, you know, get off your phone. Quit writing shitty reviews about people. Go talk to them in person. Right. Bring your issue to light. And, uh, you know, that would be my suggestion. Yeah, for sure. And and if you had a good time, if they worked hard, whether you caught fish or not, tip them appropriate. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Yes. An appropriate tip, again, 15 to 30 percent. I go in that 20 percent range of whatever that trip costs. That's a good rule of thumb. Because there's a lot of new anglers that go out fishing now to have a fish of a lifetime, and they want it. They don't know. So there you go. Now you know. And I'm telling you, too, the other thing, if you're if you're going on a day and a half trip, and those guys have been grinding their butts off and fishing double shifts and doing nighttime Oh, yeah. Things, Think about the night. The little stuff. dumb stuff that you could do for those guys, too, goes such a long way to walk on the boat with a flat of of monsters or walk on the boat with a little bit of, I mean just there's so many little things you know a new bag of socks that a crew member would be so stoked with like bring a bag of homemade chocolate chip cookies that's what from I'm the saying wife, there's so many you know? little things you could do that just totally stoke a guy out so much these guys are lucky to get three or four hours of sleep a night if that ever yeah. you know in 24 hours yeah, and they the, might be on for you know they might be doing three weeks straight of that so yeah. you got to think it, yeah you, you could that's, have that's a tough one you know and that's hard to keep your and cool. how can they keep their smile on that well right? and that's just like, it so yeah, they just got off a of 10 days straight right and you're the new happy group of anglers right. showing up for your experience and you got to remember that these guys are you know tired they're probably at the end of their ropes already in terms of mental capacity and they're doing their best probably you yeah. know so you for know sure. just uh yeah. Yeah. Good call. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go ahead and jump back on the phone. Sounds good. How about this time we talk to Don? He's calling us from Temecula this morning. Morning, Don. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey. Good morning. So, um, up, Don? my wife just started fishing. My wife just started fishing with me. Um, I've taken her out on a couple half day trips and stuff. She's really getting the hang of it. Um, I want to get her a new setup. I know there's a lot to choose from out there. Maybe some smaller grade tuna stuff, yellow tail, um, suggestions on a good all around rod and reel. For uh, uh, just getting started, I think, uh, and if she fishes half day as well as go, you know potentially going offshore, I think the first and best outfit that a person could probably get would be a 25 pound live bait outfit. It's not so heavy that you couldn't drop down on a half day trip and catch a calico bass, and it'll take care of most of the kelp paddy, yellow tail, and a lot of the school size tuna that you do. And a seven foot rod would usually make the best of that for somebody getting started, especially a lady. Um, a longer rod will provide you better casting distance. A shorter rod will provide you better leverage. Uh, 
Um, I, I think a seven foot, 25 pound rod and an according, you know, star drag reel that's nice and easy to cast would probably be the perfect first getting started outfit. The only wrinkle to that is this year, you, you talked about tuna, so much of our fish is above average size. You know, we just don't see a lot of sub 50 pound tuna right now. And that's a pretty tough nut to crack on anything lesser than a 40 pound two speed outfit. Yeah. So depending on what you think you guys are going to do the most, of if it's going to be more geared towards the half day thing then maybe go on the lighter side and if you think it's going to be overnights and day and a half i I would look at like a a tal or a a speedmaster 12 or a fathom 25 narrow some kind of nice easy small two speed that fits in your hand well with some 40 pound and again a a seven foot rod that's you know rated 30 to 30 to 50 pounds or 30 to 60 pounds or something something that neighborhood there all right great hey thanks a lot for the call this morning good luck uh, get out on the water uh great text here from from uh, Charlie and Gardena, and he says, I suggest using rock salt in your kill bag to make the ice slurry with rock salt and a little salt water. Amazing and lasts much longer. What do you, what's your thought on that? I agree with him. Yeah, yeah. R- adding some salt to your uh, to your ice uh, mixture in your kill bag, a little bit of salt water with, uh, with, with, ice, with ice and added salt to that, you know? Bring, and that lowers the temperature, right? You are going to lower the temperature down a lot. You can actually freeze fish by doing that. Really? Um, and, and, you know, if you... Does it make your last ice last? longer too? yeah you should buy some more time on that for sure that's a great tip um you can definitely get a you know one pound bag of salt from smart and final add a cup to your kill bag uh mix it around a little bit that's a great way to add some uh you know add some life to your to your ice and get the temperature down for sure you yeah. betcha we, yeah. we talked to that caller before and you, you obviously have a, a a big emphasis on fish care you share a lot of photos of your fish what is your fish process like Tuna hits the deck. How do you how do you take care of it when you get the final product that you were describing earlier? Uh, yeah, I mean it really does start when you gaff your fish, right? Um, at that point in time, you really want to get it killed as quickly as possible. Whether your method is to uh, you know hit them with a bat on the head or just put a spike in their head or you know run an ikajime wire down them, whatever it is, kill the fish as fast as you possibly can, and uh, you know make some cuts around the you know around the tissue and the gills. Cut, you know open up some arteries. There's a way to do it uh, underneath the pec fin there's an artery there you can probably look at a youtube video and see where the artery is on a on a tuna underneath their pectoral fin and there's also a lot of places in the gills that you can you know cut to start letting some blood flow out of them so you know get the blood flowing out of them get them killed as quickly as possible get your pictures uh you know uh you know take your time get your get your good pictures right because that's really what it's about don't sure that's something that i think some of these charter guys uh you know i, I see it a lot i gotta slow people down sometime and i go hang on a second we gotta get a good picture yeah, guys yeah. you know let's get the blood off the fish here. set it up get the light right that's the fish that's a memory they'll have yeah. forever the picture lasts that's the part forever. that lasts the story lasts forever but the picture's something they can put up on the wall right so yeah. get your pictures gill and gut your fish and get it submerged in uh, a mixture of ice and ideally ice and salt water uh, as soon as possible. Or rock salt. You can add some rock salt yeah. to it. Yeah, any kind of salt doesn't necessarily. Rock salt, you know, is maybe too too coarse. You too want coarse. it to dissolve a bit, right? Uh, okay. So just I, regular table salt. I think you could just get Morton's, you know, normal yeah. salt, you know, and that will, that will help uh, definitely bring your temperatures down a okay. lot in your kill bag, but. You know, the best scenario is ice and salt water. Uh, you know, you can put your hand in a, in a bag full of just ice, and then you can put your other hand in a, in a bag with ice and salt water, and you will be pulling that hand out of there immediately because of how much colder. <laughs> how much colder it yes, is. Yes, the difference is amazing in a brine versus a just chipped ice or crushed ice or, or, or cubed ice, however you have it. But, yeah, you know, you also burn a lot of ice that way, too. So, you know, a bucket of salt water, a bunch of ice, get your tuna submerged in, the, in that mixture. And I'd ideally like to let it sit there for 24 hours if I yeah. could, That's you know, good. at least overnight, yeah. you know. Yeah. Good suggestion, Charlie, there. One more text there. Uh, not a lot of time left for this one, but I think this is important. Nick from Chula Vista wants to know, today's show has me fired up to use the kite. What do I need to buy for a starter setup? Wow, that's a pretty. Can uh, we run that in a, in a minute? Yeah, so you got to have a kite rod, you got to have a kite reel, electric. So, so, do you need electric? You don't need electric, but boy, is it it's sure nice. Yeah. You'll sure have I it mean, by the end of the yeah. season. Yeah, if you don't have an electric one and you go out fishing with your kite, you will have one eventually <laughs> yeah. because you will understand if you use that. It. Yeah, so kite rod, kite reel, uh, you know, loaded with 65 or 80. And the kite rod pounds. can be just an old re- rod you have in the garage. It, could be it doesn't anything, have to yeah. be the little short custom rod. Yeah, but it? I mean, there's a bunch of nice, uh, you know, for, yeah. for 80 to 100. 
120 bucks, you can get yourself a nice little kite rod yeah. that, uh, that's proper, you know? So, yeah. and then you said, uh, like that, that 80 pound max quattro would be perfect on that reel. Yeah. 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 A 65 to 80 pound max quattro. Okay. That'd probably be a really nice, that'd be a, that'd be a pretty, uh, that'd be a nice, uh, that'd yeah. be like a flashy setup, yeah. right? That'd be a good setup. Kite. Kite, any kite you like, I would recommend a California Flyer kite because they are competitively but you, do you priced. Need, do you need a balloon with the California Flyer like kite? So we actually, when we were prototype testing those, we tried to break them. So we were we were running them behind my skiff uh, out of Orange County uh, on a windy day with no balloon, and we were dragging them around as fast as I can go. And I top out on my boat about 28 knots. So we were dragging those around at 28 knots and maneuvering erratically, trying to see without a balloon, without a balloon, just yeah. trying to get them, and then we put a balloon on them we were trying to see where the weak points were we yeah. never broke one we never had one go down but yes you, you know here's the thing if you don't have a balloon on your kite and you hook a big blue fin up somebody's got to jump on that kite rod right, and yeah. start winding that thing in because otherwise it's pretty much going to probably get squirrely at some point in time as soon as the you know you get hooked up to a fish fish is pulling the kite down you're trying to pop the clip you've got to have someone dedicated to the kite at that point yep. to, to make sure it doesn't go in the yeah, water and yeah. break and you and get the, your kite back and right? the boston kite flies a little easier in lighter wind yes and mo- 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 i would say that you you gotta have a Boston kite. You gotta have a Boston kite because you will one day run out of helium yeah. or balloons, yeah. and you will be in a situation where that kite will prevail. So. Yeah, for sure. Best suggestion we can make is go into a tackle shop that knows their stuff. Like go talk to the Fisherman's pros. Landing Tackle, uh, Dana Landing, or Mission Bay, and and, and get them to set get, you up. Get done up right. Yeah. Hey, when we come back, we're gonna find out who's going fishing on the Dana Wharf and got that killer gift card to Costa. More Let's Talk hookup when we return on the Mightier 1090. Hayden Lane here from Fast Lane Kayaking, and I got to tell you about all the rad new stuff we have in the shop, like the fully updated new line of Hobie inflatable kayaks, the iTrek series. Hobie took the best-selling i11s and made it even better, then added new models like it, like the new iTrek 9 that weighs just 37 pounds, fully rigged, packs into a small bag with wheels, and fits just about anywhere. And on the water, this thing performs featuring a super wide and flat hull shape that is stable and an elevated beach chair style seat that is comfortable. Or the all new Hobie Mirage Lynx. Inspired by the shape of the inflatable kayaks, Hobie made a durable and ultralight hardtop model. It's the missing link. It looks like a hybrid of a stand-up paddleboard and a kayak. And the best part, at just 45 pounds, the hull weighs about half as much as similar sized kayaks. And it's stackable. Pile them up on your roof rack or your truck bed. You gotta see this thing. Stop by the shop right on the water in Dana Landing Marina in Mission Bay. Or check us out online at fastlanekayaking.com. For quality, the Islander out of Fisherman's Landing is a favorite among anglers. But Islander Charter is much more than great fishing. They also do incredible Guadalupe white shark diving trips, as well as a schedule of kayak mothership trips. Check out islander-charters.com. The Islander is San Diego's leader when it comes to one and one half to five day fishing. Experience the Islander difference. Visit islander-charters.com for all the details. There are plenty of boat slips and marinas in San Diego, but there's only one Kona Kai. It's not just a place to park your boat. It's a way of life if you're in America's finest city. The Kona Kai Resort Spa Marina has multiple swimming pools and a private beach, waterfront restaurants, and award-winning spa, most of which is included for marina tenants. Check ResortKonaKai.com for more information. The Kona Kai Resort, much more than just a place to park your boat. Want to take your catch from fresh to superior grade? This is Robbie Gant from AFCO. We developed the tools for the EKGMA process. Circuit Breaker is specially designed to disable the full length of the fish's spinal cord. The memory-resistant wire of AFCO Circuit Breaker will not bend or kink, even after repeated use. Take your fish care to the next level with Circuit Breaker by AFCO. Available at a dealer near you or check out AFCO.com. To find dealer locations and to find everything an angler needs, visit ATFCO.com. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. All right, it's time to find out who's got themselves that killer Costa gift card and the passes. Ryan's going to do us the honor, flip the coin, whether we uh, have a caller or a texter. texter. And today it is a texter, so congratulations to Nick in Chula Vista. You got yourself 300 bucks at Costa and the pass for Dana War Sport Fishing. That's, congratulations, yeah, congratulations. man. congratulations. And, uh, boy, what a great guest, though. Ryan, awesome what, job. you said you'll come back? So good. I'll come back anytime, All guys. right. Yeah, it was yeah, a real yeah, pleasure. Really Thank fantastic. you so much for having me on. Yeah. 
you're a great representative for your product to California Flyer. Again, how do we get California Flyers? Uh, you know, the website's great, and then it's in every major tackle retailer. So we got, you know, uh, obviously Dana Landing, Sport Fishing, Fisherman's Landing, uh, Melton, uh, Pretty much anywhere that you're, you know, you're accustomed to shopping for, uh, you know, you're, you know, going to get your real fishing gear from. Yeah. yeah. Get all that. Any good big game shop should have that lure. Yeah. It's yeah. a must and have. And it's a must have on your boat, for sure. Yeah. If you're kite fishing. And, and AFCO. You got to get all the AFCO All the products. AFCO yeah, stuff, yeah, too. Yeah. All their stand-up harnesses, yeah. all that stuff. That's all. all that, yeah. That's the real deal. Yeah. Hey, thanks very much. Appreciate that. Hey, thank you very much for uh, listening and all the support. Thanks for the text. Thanks for the calls. Thanks to JP for answering the phones. And, of course, Adam for doing the great stuff on the app and the archives on our Let's Talk Hookup app. Next Saturday, we have a special mystery guest, so you'll just have to tune in to find out. And then next Sunday, the man, Doug Kern from Fisherman's Landing Tackle, will be here. Thanks for listening today. We'll be back next Saturday and Sunday, 7 to 9 a.m., right here on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio and, of course, the Let's Talk Hookup app. We'll see you then.